Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. I'm Stylosa. So let's talk about a couple of topics in this video. So we want to talk about new Overwatch League teams, but we'll get onto that in a second. And also the Overwatch World Cup, which is about to hit. I mean, it's literally going live on Friday. Um, they're only just starting to advertise this, which is good, but I think they should probably do a little bit more. Uh, however, let's start the video with this. This is the All Access skins. Now, these are very fancy skins, but there's something very unique about these skins. Now, if I read this off from the actual official website, the blog post about this, it says this, All-Star Legendary Skins. To celebrate the All-Star game, we're revealing two new Legendary Overwatch skins, the 2018 Atlantic All-Star Tracer and the 2018 Pacific All-Star Genji. Both skins will be available for a limited time from August the 17th to the 27th. Each skin is redeemable for 300 Overwatch League tokens. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. These are skins that you can only buy with Overwatch League tokens. You cannot get these skins any other way. Now, you're probably sitting there thinking, well, Sty, this is no different than the actual team uniforms. And it's not, right? But the difference is, they are Overwatch League skins. There is a major difference with these skins here. They look like typical legendary skins. However, they are behind the paywall of the League tokens. Now, how do you get League tokens, you're probably asking. Well, there's a couple of ways you can get them. So, I think there are various things you can do on Twitch to just unlock free tokens. By watching Overwatch League streams, you will get tokens. And sometimes you will just randomly get like a, a, a bunch of tokens. I think you get like 100 every now and again or something like that. So, that's enough to just straight up buy an Overwatch League skin. Or the other way is you enter into competitions that the various Overwatch League teams run. You'll notice that on Twitter, if you follow the Overwatch League teams, very frequently they'll do things like, hey, we're giving away a 1,000 Overwatch League tokens or we're giving away 5,000. I think we gave away something crazy like 10,000 tokens after Spitfire won uh, Stage 1, I think. Uh, I remember doing something crazy. Maybe not 10,000, but we gave away quite a few. Um, those are the only ways to get these. Now, you can't buy them. Like, you cannot go in and buy these tokens. So one of the problems people have started to have with this is if you don't watch Overwatch League... Now, let's be real here, right? There are supposedly over 40 million players of Overwatch. Now, if that's true, um, when you look at the Overwatch League viewing figures, surely that should be millions of people that watch this, but it's not. I mean, I think the finals only kind of reached about 300 or 400,000 on Twitch. I know that they actually got fairly big viewing figures if you combined all the viewing sources together but the fact remains is if you're not a fan of overwatch league right you don't get these skins because you won't have league tokens now there were things you could do like i said you could i think you could sign up to like the newsletter and you got 100 tokens uh, and stuff like that so there are little things you could do to kind of give yourselves those like initial bump of tokens but you cannot get these skins through playing the game that is what makes them very unique it's very similar to the lucio emote now there was a load of drama with this it was like oh my god the 30 dollar lucio emote and that kind of was true now obviously it was part of the all access pass and you get loads of stuff for the all access pass but you also got this emote and that emote was being pushed at the time as the main selling point. It's like, hey, look at this. The only emote that you can get through spending money, right? Which is like, yeah, and it's also the best emote Lucio's got and probably the best emote in the game. If you've ever seen this in the game, it's dead good. Like, it's really, really good. I've seen people using it in the spawn. It's just totally ridiculous. Um, but you need to have the all access pass to get that. Then what happened is this actually showed up in the game during the Summer Games update. Now, what that meant is you could buy it, but actually you couldn't. It was a bug, right? Or was it a bug? Yes and no. It looks like what they've done is they've added in the ability to buy that um, the the um, emote for league tokens. It wasn't for credits in game. It's for directly with league tokens. Um, but they don't want to turn it on until a later date because apparently there's some very specific wording saying it's like a limited time thing, which doesn't mean that it's limited only to all access. It means that it's limited on all access for a certain time frame. So it's kind of like legal lawyer speak, whatever, right? At the end of the day, I don't think this is very good. I don't like having these type of skins behind paywalls. If this was like a special Overwatch League skin and it had Overwatch League slapped all over it for Genji and Tracer, then I'd be cool with that. But because these are just straight up design skins, it, it is like, hang on, guys. These are things that would have been part of events in the past. Um, why? Wh what? I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I think it's very divisive. This is. I don't really like it. I think they should allow us to buy these skins just with in-game uh, credits as well. So I'm, I'm not too hot on that. All right, let's go into the World Cup. So 
Blizzard have been getting slated for not advertising the World Cup. Like, they literally don't advertise it. However, yesterday they were like, hey, World Cup, check it out. Here's a, um, a breakdown of the Korean group phase. Now, this group phase features a lot of lovely, lovely teams. So we've got South Korea, obviously the favourites of the entire tournament for obvious reasons. Uh, you would expect them to go through here. We've also got uh, Russia. Russia are a bit of like a dark horse. They could pop off or they could be like not great. We'll have to wait and see what Russia do. Finland, one of the strongest teams in terms of just pure names. I mean, this roster, Fraggy, Zappis, Shaz, Big Goose, Linkser, Taimu, Davin, this is a very strong team. That team could do damage, right? So they are definitely one to watch. Uh, we've got Japan. Um, uh, Japan kind of came out of nowhere last year um, and they did quite well. Um, and there was AKTM, I think his name was, AKMT, I am butchered his name. It was a McCree play, it was very good. Um, so maybe somebody else like that will emerge from Japan, we don't know. Um, typically Japan's more console orientated than PC, so we, we don't know where this could go, could go anywhere. Uh, we've got Chinese Taipei, I don't know, a bit of a, bit of like a, an unknown this team is and um, they could do really well uh they could not do that well but i'll have to wait and see right <laughs> i remember these guys from last year when the uk absolutely demolished them uh they were a team called flash wolves uh and we just destroyed them so it was pretty funny uh, hong kong um again i'm not too sure where hong kong could go and that's the the, the roster um uh, well the, the teams that are going to be playing in this stage which is good the good thing is that they are starting to advertise this now remember we, this is the very first group stage so we've got other group stages that's going to happen uh over the coming months which end in the paris group stage at the end of august which of course the uk is part of and i'm and i'm the gm for the uk team so i'll be over there in paris and that's going to be cool what i hope though is we start seeing skins available for the world cup teams why are these not in the game now like this is another thing i'd, I'd, I'd wish if blizzard uh, would do we've they've got these skins they built the in-game skins they were all there for last year's world cup why are they not in the game right now as part of the Summer Games event? You can sell them for in-game credits, whatever. Like, people would buy them. I, I can guarantee you people would buy them because they want the skin of their home nation. I would use all of the UK skins. I'd get rid of all the Spitfire skins I've got, and I'd use the UK skins, right? You, you'd be the same. If you were Russian, you'd do the same. If you were Swedish, you'd do the same. If you were French, you'd do the same. Everybody likes to represent their nation. So why this is not in the game is very weird to me, especially when they've already made the skins. Okay, and finally, let's talk about Overwatch League. So what we've got here is a couple of Overwatch League uh, confirmations, let's say. So Toronto has been confirmed as an Overwatch League team. This is absolutely huge because we were expecting there to be, uh, like, remember Atlanta? This is the other North American team. And then we were thinking, like, it's going to be Chicago or something like that, right? Surely it's a major city in America. But guess what? It's going to be Toronto. So we're getting our first Canadian team. Now, this is actually backed by a load of Canadian entrepreneurs. So we've got Michael Kimmel. Um, and then I, I believe he's the Canadian entrepreneur who's, who's involved. This is according to ESPN. I'll link to the article in the video description below, guys, so you can check it out. Um, it's going to be run by the esports organization Splice. Um, and the slot's expected to sell for $35 million, um, which is a lot compared to what it was last year, because remember, they were around about $20 million last year. So they've upped the price by $15 million for season two. But still, these big companies, these big investors, these big entrepreneurs are still invested or interested in investing in Overwatch, which is, well, really huge. So this means we're going to have a Canadian team. It means we're going to have another North American team, Atlanta. So there's two teams. That's North America sorted. Because remember, it's supposed to be two from each region. Paris is going to be a team. What is going to be the other European team? Now, I heard rumours that it could be Amsterdam. I think that would be really damn cool if it was Amsterdam. But also, it seems a bit strange that Berlin would get looked over. Because Berlin is like, when you think about the major capitals in Europe, you think of London, you think of Paris, you think of Berlin. Then you possibly go to places like Rome. Um, although I don't think Rome is probably going to be up there in terms of uh, like the, the sort of esports exposure that it would possibly get from Italy. You could maybe say Barcelona, uh, Madrid and cities like that. But I definitely, I think you would say the three big cities are 100% London, Paris and Berlin. Uh, maybe you could say cities like Dusseldorf and things like that in Germany as well, um, or, or even Cologne, like for the Gamescom connection or, you know, the, uh, that kind of stuff. But still, I don't know where it's going to go in Europe, but it would be nice to see Amsterdam or something completely off the wall. Uh, also as well, I've, I've completely missed the Nordic regions out. What about Stockholm? You know, uh, esports meccas, let's say. That's the, uh, so, yeah, who knows? Who knows where this is going to go? You guys go crazy in the comments below. Then we move over to Asia. Now, we know we've got the Guangzhou province um, team. 
which uh, or, or I think it's, I think Guangzhou is a city, but also there's a province named after it, which is why I get a little bit confused sometimes. Um, so that's going to be one. So that means we're going to get two teams in China, obviously with Shanghai Dragons. But where's the other team going? Is it going to be maybe an Australian team? That'd be really funky if that was the case. I think it'd be great to have like a Sydney team um, or, or something like that, or like a Perth team. Um, but will that happen? I don't know. I think there's more demand in sort of the, um, the Chinese region, I guess. Like um, I, China could hold... 50 teams probably if it wanted to um, but it just depends on the level of investment and if people want to spend from China so I don't really know where the Asian region is going to go but one thing's for sure the fact that we've got a Toronto team is really really cool like Canadian representation is going to be awesome because a lot like loads of Canadians play Overwatch right um, loads of Americans obviously play it loads of Brits loads of Europeans so it'd be great to get more of that going on the only downside to this is with confirming more North American teams, it does drive home the fact that this is, yes, a bit of an American league. As much as it's a global league and as much as the London team is the champions of the league and they do come from London and they're the only European team. Yes, I know they're Korean players, but they represent London. Um, can that be like we need more like in an ideal world, we should have the same number of teams in North America that we do in Europe and that we do in Asia. That would be ideal. But obviously money you know, the teams go where the money is. So Blizzard are not going to be like, hey, we're not going to have a team, you know, in this region because we don't want that. If somebody's there willing to cough up the money and they've got good plans in place to build and develop a team, then they're going to do that. Of course, the big thing to take away from all of this is that Overwatch League is probably here to stay for a good few years. Um, this was always the worry, worry with Overwatch League. Would it last after season one? Is season one the pinnacle and then it just goes downhill from there? Well, looking at the investments coming in from these different organizations, it looks like that's probably not the case. And we're probably going to get a, maybe not a bigger Overwatch League, but a more stable Overwatch League for next year. And then going into year three, we could be looking at a year four and then even a year five. Um, after that, I don't know where this goes. Because remember, games have got shelf lives. You know, they're not going to last forever. But then you could argue, well, League of Legends has done well. Counter-Strike's done well. So, yeah, and Dota. We'll have to wait and see. Ladies and gentlemen, go crazy in the comments below with where you suspect the other Overwatch League teams could be based. Also, let me know what you think about the skin situation we discussed at the start of the video and the Overwatch World Cup. All right, guys, I've been Stylosa. You can follow me on Twitter, which is at Gaming, and do follow my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv forward slash Stylosa. And I will catch you, lovely lot, on the next one. Toodaloo.